Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of What Did He Said Podcast. Welcome, everybody. We got Juan Perez in the building. What's up? What's up? What's up, my boy? I saw you was back in the gym, my boy, uh, up on stage here in town hitting the mics. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, you went with me, so... <laughs> yeah, I mean, I was there, but but of course, you know, Javi Luna, he, he gives you a hard time sometimes. He's like, when are you going to get back in the gym, Juan? Uh, whenever I'm able to do that. You know what I mean? Like, I got to come up with, like, new stuff for me to do because there's certain jokes I want to do and then... I like to think through my stuff before I just go to the mic, just because I don't want it to be a waste. Yeah, yeah. And I, and I just want to make sure, just in case there's not even a crowd, I can at least work it out in the microphone. But really, uh, we have we have a mic now at the house, and then we have that, that speaker. So shoot, I could just do that and then go to open mic because I can test out a lot more stuff for me. Yeah, 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 yeah. So. See how you like that method. Uh, well, you'll you'll probably get to work out some material uh, as you join us, Houston, Texas, at the Improv, February twenty third and twenty fourth. Um, you'll be kind of like co-host, you know, kind of like guest spot slash co-host. Yeah. Uh, Theo Hoover is more of the uh, guest spot. We're gonna have a few guest spots, bro. Uh, speaking of guest spots, uh, I'm gonna be by the time this airs, I think you guys are gonna miss it. But uh, I'm gonna pull up on my boy Kim Flores. He has two shows at the Improv, and I'm gonna get to work out. You know, do a do a guest spot. Uh, that? that is actually tomorrow. Oh wow! Okay. Because we're filming the we're recording this on a Tuesday. Yeah. Oh wow! Okay. Yeah. So this, he's he's working on Thursday. No, no, no. I, be- I believe Wednesday it's Wednesday. Oh, okay, yeah, okay. Yeah, I believe it's Wednesday. So shout out to him, man. Um, he he told me that his first comedy show ever attending was my show at the Schomburg Improv, and he was just like, "Oh, I think I could do this shit." Or, or he liked it. He had a good time, right? He had a good time, and uh, he had never really had that experience. And uh, next thing you know, he got in the game, and next thing you know, he's he's doing guest spots for people, and then he's featuring. Now he's he's got his own tour, man. So salute to he's him. He's running, running with it. Salute to him for sure. Um, Are we still friends? Tour after Houston on the twenty third, twenty fourth of February. We have Canyon Lake on March second, uh, Lubbock, Texas, March third, with my homeboy uh, Jesse Payton, and then I have Midland, Texas, March fifteenth, San Angelo, March sixteenth. Uh, Covina, April 4th through the 7th. And just hit up the website, chingobling.com. You can get more info because we're going all over the place, man. So uh, speaking of comedians, bro, did you catch wind of some of the heat David Lucas caught? I saw some of it. I didn't I didn't get too deep into it just because, I mean, for the most part, I agree with him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah and then i know he's just getting all the hate and stuff like that so yeah. like most people are probably just gonna be like man fuck david lucas i'm just like man i actually like david lucas well, I actually I love, met I david it. lucas oh yeah when you meet him at, uh, when uh, he was rolling with shab or with shab yeah they did the at&t center and so i was there with them and, and i got talked to him for a little bit he, he, he's a real cool dude man he's yeah. real cool yeah he's smart man I, I wouldn't mind meeting him as well maybe have him on the show one day but um the way i look at that situation is kind of like he's an edgy comedian man comedians you got to have free speech. You got to be able to attempt and try to be funny and try to be able to touch on several topics. But I was kind of ticked off when I saw so many comedians and comedy fans feeling like, uh, nope, that's one thing you can't talk about. You can't touch that. Or nope, he's a martyr. He's a saint. You can't go there. Or like, oh, that's off limits. And it's like, it's it's just a sign of the times. Like, unfortunately, the way the media and different forces portrayed that event, it just became such a point of contention where it's like, are you posting the square? Are you not? What side are you on? Are you an ally? Mm-hmm. And he actually went on Willie D's um, podcast and they got to discuss it. Yeah. But I just, I just kept feeling like, man, people really not understanding that he's an edgy comedian. He's trying to be great. He's trying to do some... Uh, he said if Chappelle would have said it, y'all would have gave him a pass. Like, he made a lot of good points, bro. And it's just unfortunate that comedy, more people should be on the same page. That um, comedy is such an important art form. It's such an important medium for our society. Like, free speech is so important for civilization. And we got to be careful when we go around trying to police and i saw like it was like godfrey and some other people that he had on his podcast and they talked about it and they were kind of leaning towards like yeah you got to be careful and when you do you got to make sure it's funny and you this and there's certain things and you're da-da-da, and you're gonna walk people and i'm like bro i'm waiting to see which one of these comedians is gonna stick up for the comedian yeah, I mean it's it's but that's like that's what it's like now. I mean there's so many people trying to be comedians now, especially in Texas where like a lot of people moved to Austin to do it. Mm-hmm. So a lot of them have opinions and how do you get more views for a lot of these guys is 
to just talk shit on it. It's like, oh, I'm going to jump on that because I don't really necessarily agree with him, but fuck it. I'll get some clout off of it. That's usually how it happens. They eat their own. I mean, and honestly, you've seen it. You've seen it with other comedians and other hot spots in the past. And so it's just one of those things where it's just that way. But it's like, it's like, but that's like with any job, dude. You always have like the drama and all that stuff. And then you have a bunch of people that just talk shit. So, I mean, and for yeah. the most part, comedians, we're like made to talk shit. Yeah, like we're made to, to like <laughs> look at it and then figure out what's an angle I can yeah. take. And then how can this benefit me? Because, I mean, that's just how some people move up here. And, and I mean, and some people won't even say that out loud. Like, I don't give a shit. So, <laughs> Well, you, you reminded me of something, man. Um, I was watching an old Patrice O'Neill uh q a he did on uh opie anthony show mm -hmm. i was listening on youtube and he, uh patrice o'neill was commenting on a situation that tracy morgan was in years ago right because this mm -hmm. is an old thing and he was basically saying how chris rock first showed support for tracy morgan like oh man you know tracy yada yada like backing him up and then maybe he started getting some of the heat or he got a phone call from an agent or something and he had to walk it back be like nah man you out of line tracy can't be doing that there's yeah. certain protected groups that we can't offend or go against because they're gonna come knocking on your door and they're gonna frame you or use whatever type of media connections and um and and that that reminded me of that where i'm like chris rock really bro like you couldn't even i don't well, know because i mean so so on that i mean uh just with that when you get to a certain level I mean, because comedians are usually free spirits, but once you get to a certain level, like, I'm sure you got to tap dance around stuff, especially yeah. if you own multiple businesses or you own, like, You're on a you have time. you actually have a payroll of people that you do. Yeah. Like, there's a lot of stuff you probably got to tap dance around, mm -hmm. but if you're just a comedian, and, and again, like... David Lucas, he's hilarious and stuff like that. And then he's he's at a he's at a level where he can be free and talk about stuff. He's gonna get controversy, of course, but at the same time, he can talk about whatever he wants and not have repercussions of like, oh man, if I say this, I, you know, I'm gonna cost these people their jobs because yeah. I can't afford to pay them or whatever it is. And so a lot, like I think it's just advice, like big bro kind of advice from like Chris Rock at the time, just telling him, hey man, and and, and again. You got to think about the time of comedy around that time, too, of like, you know, now like black comedian, like comedy is like huge and stuff that it was paved by the kings of comedy and all that mm -hmm, stuff. Mm -hmm. And, you know, th there's probably certain areas right there where we're at, at a time there was only like, you know, like, this is what this is what a lot of black comedians have said in the past, mm -hmm. like Eddie Murphy and all that, like they knew like for there's only like this is what they would say on other podcasts would be there would only be one black comedian at a time, mm -hmm. right? And it would be like, you know, it was Richard Pryor. And he was always scared of Eddie Murphy because he knew Eddie Murphy was the next one. He's gonna be the and one. then he, Eddie Murphy came up. And then after him, it was, you know, so on and so forth until it got to the Kings of Comedy. And then it opened up the avenue Start for splinter. everybody to where it was like, oh, we can have hire the black one. And so all of a sudden, all black comedians have different stories and, and stuff like that. So it Styles, just, yeah. it got bigger. And so like, and then Def Comedy Jam was a big movement for that too. And I, I feel like that's what's happening right now for Hispanic com comedians. I mean, if you think about it, like... With social media? With, the, with anything. Think it's about not just George Lopez anymore. It's it was like, George yeah. Lopez and then, you know, Gabriel and all these. It was always like one major one at a time. Yeah. And now it's splintering off into... Like, now you got a lot of flavors Because now styles. it's like, oh, their story's not just, oh, they cut lawns. It's it's more shit. Like, yeah, 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 there's yeah, a bunch yeah. of like, no, like, dude, <laughs> a lot of us are just Americans. A lot of us don't even speak hey. Spanish, motherfucker. Like, yeah. like there's a lot of shit. So look, so look, I'll give you an example. Um, this morning, I was trying to write. I was trying to come up with some funny stuff. And uh, I need to get better about like actually writing pen and paper. But I was walking around the house. I was getting the baby ready for, for daycare or whatever. And um, I came in the room. I was getting ready. And I'm like, hey, if, if a comedian wanted to make the point that Travis Kelsey and Taylor Swift relationship ain't real. Like... How would Ralphie May do it? How would Patrice O'Neal do it? How would like George Lopez do it? It'd probably be like, hey, right, cause like, right, watch out, cause you know, if, if that was if that was like a, a Latino couple, you know, she'd be on the sidelines already, or like during the play. Wait, she say the thing again at the beginning. If you were trying to right. communicate what? So basically, I was telling Marisol, I was like, hey, I'm just trying to write and and analyze a subject. I said the subject would be, how do I take the premise and tell the audience like um. Like the Travis Kelsey Taylor Swift mm -hmm. relationship. I'm, oh, that's not real. Y'all think that's real? Yeah. And then go in and make your okay. funny points. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
I mean, that's just anything. So, like, so, the, like, and and again, this is like you could you could. Ralphie May does like a really good uh, what is it masterclass that yeah, he talked yeah, about yeah, it. Yeah. Then a, a comedy store would have these comedians come over and do stuff like that. I think Ari Shafir has one up on YouTube somewhere. Oh, word. But uh, they they all have like their takes on it. But Ralphie threw down so much knowledge, and yeah. I have been wanting to watch it, and I finally did. And like. There's like takes for all that, but like with the premise, it's normally just saying your thought. And and the way I kind of think of it is like, how would I say this to a comedian? And then because like with comedians, like like especially with Israel, whenever when I would do it with Israel, dude, I'd make him laugh all the time because I would say something fucked up, yeah. and he would get it, and I would, and then he'd be like, bro, you can never say that on stage. And I'm like, I think I will try it, like just yeah. <laughs> just yeah, because yeah, yeah, yeah. because I have my points, and he's like, and I would make him laugh, and then he would be like. Uh, and, and it was just like so like edgy some of the shit i would say to him but i would get away with it because we're friends and so with that it's like saying translating it on stage like how could i say it and if i do how good are my points to be able to could it get I'm me funny. out of it yeah, like because yeah, yeah. a lot of it a lot of it comes down to if you have a point on it and then on top of that if there's truth behind it it's gonna it's gonna work yeah, and yeah. that's like literally how Patrice and Ralphie would just work. They'd work all day on that. Like, mm -hmm. they would hit something, they'd hit a point, and people would just automatically disagree, like, uh-uh, you can't say that. And it's yeah. like, they would hit you so with so much truth that yeah. it'd be like, oh, yeah, I yeah. can't say shit. Like, think about the joke with Patrice O'Neill with the special that he did. Mm -hmm. And he, he was talking about the women. And he's like, ladies, let's just say, hypothetically, you were in a car accident and, you know, you lost your... I, like, how, how long? You like, lost I your feel vagina bad. And, and... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and then, what would you do for your man what if you, you got do, that no what more? What would you do for your man to keep your man if, like, you were in a clause and you could only you could stay with you, you for two your, months or they whatever? Had to, they had to take your vagina What would you do? And they were like, uh, anal. They're like, and they were like, oral. <laughs> like, uh, the, the mouth, give them oral. And it's like, yeah. okay, y'all been, y'all been pussy beaming me all show, but y'all just described yourselves as a series of holes. Yeah. And it was just so masterful. Yeah done mm -hmm. but that's literally how you do that it's to the point of like i'm gonna say some controversial shit right now or whatever it could be i'm gonna make this point and then from there i'm gonna deconstruct it and make you guys realize where the fuck i'm coming from and that's a master comedian because yep. you're bringing them into your realm and they're like you oh you're right it. yeah because that's just like, like man we don't I see ourselves like that yeah. yeah and then they do it skillfully where they'll find like I'll, I'll point out something ironic about the situation or mm -hmm. I'll, I'll hit you with a punchline but I'm gonna uh, misdirect you with a series of something else like yeah. boom 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 bam yeah you know so man um, and you just you just mentioned Israel bro and uh, man I, I still can't believe I still can't believe he's gone bro uh, rest in peace our homie Israel and I, I think about him all the time and sometimes I be wanting to text you too where I'm just like bro I can't even believe this is for real. You know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, and you just brought him up in, in the light that I remember him best, which is like master comedian, talking shop, uh, chiming in, listening to what y'all got going. You know what I mean? Fix your stuff up. But yeah, man. Um, yeah, and, and rest in peace to Patrice O'Neill and Ralphie May. Yeah. Two other people that I've kind of been studying this week and just kind of like watching how they work the same way you would watch like some jujitsu people like all right what is uh you know marcelo what is what's his little thing how does he mm -hmm. do that guillotine and what was donaher's whole thing or speaking of jujitsu yeah didn't wouldn't you have a dude at your gym that oh, oh bro dude. all right bring so that, you gotta bring that up so shout it, him out they're so sponsor by yeah the way. yeah yeah so shout out to uh the homie sebastian or yervides i don't even know how old he is bro he might be 18 19 17 i met him when he was like maybe 13 14 right he mm -hmm. was just a kid in the kids uh program and um at the jiu-jitsu classes at urban jungle shout out urban jungle um in the nighttime classes it'll be a mix you got teenagers in there too right and they'll get you to business too if you ain't careful if you're a little 44 year old mexican yeah, yeah, yeah. and you, ain't, you don't weigh that much <laughs> yeah, you know what i'm saying they, yeah. they they put you in that little spider guard next thing you know you huh? <laughs> they balloon sweep you you're like oh i'm going up i'm going up but anyway Sebastian, bro, phenom, very inspirational. He yeah. inspires me a lot because he's so focused, he's so disciplined. He's always putting in his work, and he ain't out distracted at all. Mm -hmm. And he, his last fight, uh, twenty six seconds. So that's great. I wasn't able to make it to like the last two fights, but like all the fights so far have been. It, like it's like a minute. Super it was like a minute forty five, a minute fifteen, or like forty five seconds. He hasn't even had a full fight technically. So. <laughs> 
<laughs> my my thing is this, bro. Uh, if you want me to rearrange my whole Sunday and figure out, okay, y'all good? We went to church already. Like where I got to be? What times the fight start? You asking a lot for twenty six seconds. Uh, yeah, you're like you're like you're like what time's the mauling? <laughs> like, yeah, <laughs> what what time is what time is it we're gonna bully somebody right now? So, Not even a fight, dude. This, so this, to this de- insane. So to describe this twenty six second scrap. So bell rings. They face up. I think Sebastian throws a kick yeah. uh, to the thigh. Yeah. And here's the thing. It really is the gentle art in this case because the other kid had to tap, but he's not, his face is, you know what I mean? There's no stitches. Like, he didn't have to kick him in the stump. There was no ground and pound. There's no blood. Well, you hit him with, like, a liver shot or no, something? No, it was a, a guillotine. Oh, a guillotine. So, so, so they engage, right? They, like, they kind of square up. And Sebastian just kind of, like, does, like, a little tippy-toe hop, like, got your neck. And then, like, falls back and, like, maybe just throws his legs over, oh, like, like a, a guillotine. He must have a tight fucking guillotine like like there's just some guys that are torque and that just have like the strangle because some people can do it and you can like muster through it but then there's some people where it's like oh like you feel it instantly they're like oh yes yeah. especially when they when they're con- contracting your neck yeah. forward and, and and they got their legs and and they're they're leaning the certain way but it, it didn't have to get violent violent you know what i mean like yeah. like in other words you're young you're in this fight game it's so great to have the wherewithal to know I have so many options. Yeah. I'm not I don't have to go a million rounds beating each other upside the head getting CTE. Right. Because you want to have your me- mental faculties when it's you don't want to be punch drunk in your freaking yeah, 30s. Yeah, you didn't get out. Exactly. And that boy took care of his business. So shout out to Seb- Sebastian Oyervides, Urban Jungle, you know what I'm saying coach Tony. Um and it's inspirational because you you're training at a place where you got real deal champions. I'm not saying we are champions, but you know where the bar is set. Yeah. So if you ever got to roll with him, if you ever have to spar with him, or if he's ever you know leading a class or anything, is it gonna be like? Is it gonna be like when you're in school or something? You have like I don't because you don't have brothers, but like if you had like an older I got brother, two big or something, sisters play. Like I got someone, two big sisters. Yeah, but <laughs> let's say you get into like a you bump into somebody in the street. Like, hey, you better watch out, man. I'm gonna get my I'm gonna get my big brother over here that come fuck my, you up. My big little brother. <laughs> he's 17, <laughs> and then he had to cut weight too, bro. So he yeah. was cutting weight. He was already skinny. Yeah. So now he was like. I think 126 pounds, something crazy. Yeah. Where um, I, I made it to class, it was like last. Uh, I think I can't remember when it was. This two, I can't remember one of these days ago. And um, coach, he shouted out my shows. He's like, "Don't forget, guys. Uh, this is Chingo Bling. He's actually funny. He'll be at the Improv 23rd, 24th." He's like, and also Sebastian got a fight this Sunday. And then he says, uh, and he's cutting weight. That's why he looks like that. <laughs> so he's over there in the corner stretching. Like, the, you know, yeah. it's, it's super cool, bro. That, that's dope. But yeah, man, um, uh, rodeo. It's rodeo season. Mighty Soul's killing it at, at the boutique. Uh, her apparel. She got all kind of cowboy hats and boots and all kind of accessories. Yeah, and- guys, if you live in the Houston area, guys, y'all should go down there. Actually, y'all should make a day of it. Because, like, if you go down to, like, the Rice Village, guys, there's, like, a bunch of shopping areas. Yeah, Travis Scott. And then they got, some good little, they got some good little food spots down there. Yeah, y'all need to check that out. Get you a nice. baguette. Go yeah, get your you baggage. Single people, there's a lot of people, you know, jogging and stuff. You know, you know what I'm just, saying? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, it's a uh, university yeah. area. So there's a lot of stuff there. There's coffee, yeah, there's ice cream, there's, there's, there's tacos. Uh, <laughs> tacos and ice cream. Yeah, yeah. So you also get down there and then get your shopping on. If Theo Juve was here, he'd be like, they got tortas, they got a... Yeah, are you, are you, this is more of like, not a white belt thing, you gotta be like, yeah. at least a blue belt or higher. Yeah, purple belt. Because, uh, belt. yeah, them, them joggers. <laughs> Lord have <laughs> me. But no, man, uh, yeah, my soul's killing it at the hive, rodeo season, so cook off, bro. So, when I have my shows on the 23rd, 24th, I understand it's cook off, you ain't gotta keep telling me, hey, but it's cook off. Hey, listen. You don't even got cook off tickets right now, player. Go yeah. ahead and get you the improv. <laughs> Go ahead and get your improv tickets. Well, how long does a cook off? How long does, when is a cook off over? That's a good question, but I think it goes for a couple weeks, bro. Yeah, there's two sh- so so you got this uh, this, this is my week. only weekend. Yeah. This is the only weekend. You haven't been in Houston like you haven't like you haven't been at been the improv while. in a while. So it's uh, like improv yeah, been a long yeah, you while. haven't been so y'all should come out and it's like on top of that, it's it's like 
you could do both. Like, there's the show you could go yeah. to, and then that. So, like, you could make a day of it if you're really trying to, like, make Pre-party, up for, like, Christmas that party. you messed up or Valentine's. Let's say you fucked up on Valentine's Day. Double and up. You're like, you know what? I mean, I got to make it up to them. Uh, hey, babe, I want to take you for a good night of laugh. Check this out. Before the cook off, I'm going to get you prime. Humor, humor is the best. Uh, what is that called? Aphrodisiac. That's what I was. <laughs> Yeah, we saw each other right there. We well, I was like, like you know, yeah, that's a, you know the word. That's an aphrodisiac. <laughs> yeah, so come out. I mean, it's going to be a lot of surprises. You know, Theo Hoover, give you guys some game. Uh, Prime of everything. I got to figure out what I'm aware of <laughs> at this Houston Improv. It's not really my concern. I'll let Marty Soul handle it. Um, but I told her, hey, I don't know about boots because the ones that I wore that had spurs on them, that, that's a no-no on you stage. You got other boots? Yeah, I got other boots. Uh, so I, she has options. She has options for sure. Uh, that's the least of my concern, yeah. man. I'm just trying to make sure that we have a good time. We have fun. Who is excited? Yeah, we have. Hoover been, had a good we've been old time. so excited. We've been hitting a lot of the mics. Like you've been hitting the mic pretty hard. You've been hitting, which is which is interesting because it's like it's like now we kind of starting to like get a system of like oh like there's these over here, mm-hmm. Jeff Joe and all them. Like, See the dynamic. Yeah, throwing it there where it's like oh these are nice spots here in Houston. So. Axel Rad was under construction, so they had us under this little tent thing, which was which was cool. Hopefully, it's back up upstairs. In yeah. the room, I like it because there's a lot of different crowds every single time. Like at, at these mics, like I, you know, when I would do open mics in other places, like there's just like nobody in the audience, so it just uh, felt like a waste of time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where it's like, okay, I'm not gonna. At do least it. you got people. But the fact that you have people here, it's like, oh, I can actually get genuine feedback. Yeah, you that know was what? my hope. That was like my biggest like hang up. Is Me like, too. It's a like, dude, why am I waiting waste my time? And then you know jeff joe and then the secret group and and they built and, it up and uh the riot they've mm-hmm. built up these spots where it's just like there's, there's dude people. they've like put in the work to get these crowds to come at the open mic after open mic to where it's like oh this is work oh this is dope like yeah no props to them bro that you right um they've done an excellent job of building it up to where like for example you go drop in at one of the shows at the riot and it's packed. I mean, there's a bunch of people, and it's like a room, room, and uh, and you start to you start to think like, you start to calculate like, damn, Houston, we kind of got a little scene popping off. Like there's and there's so many more rooms, bro, that we haven't even. Well, Houston's gone always to. been like the staple for Texas, like because because you got to think this is where, like Hicks, this is where they are. Hicks, Hicks Kennison. is like the main one. Hicks, Kennison, uh, Ralphie, May, Ralphie, Every, like dude, there's so many phenoms here, and then. And then the guys that are currently like here, like you, and then you have like uh, you have Ali Sadiq and I mean, even Juan like, Villarreal. Yeah, you, got, you got so many people. It's like you got phenoms here that if if a crowd member just goes, I mean, you don't you know. know maybe there's some people that are just like, oh man, I didn't really like that, but you never know who the fuck could drop in. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like to the point where it's like, oh man, these guys are funny. Like you'll mm-hmm. get some kind of laugh. And uh, it didn't take long for Bryson Brown to go from like oh yeah hosting definitely. hosting an open mic at the Improv. And you're you're just like, oh man, this dude's a pro. And then next mm-hmm. thing you know, Bruce Bruce or somebody, it's Ali, Bruce, Bruce, Ali, all like yeah. all these people he tours with, and now he's starting to headline on his, his own, own, like yeah. here and there, where it's like he's starting to grow his following too. Yeah, like, he's he's amazing. And he's too. dropped he's dropped a few audio uh, projects, and I'm looking forward to um because he he hits a lot of these spots that like I skip over, whether it's like St. Louis, Indianapolis, Cleveland, stuff like that that mm-hmm. aren't maybe my my biggest markets. So I'm looking forward to him like going back even on his own over the years. Where it's like, oh, dude, I you know sold out Indianapolis whole weekend, Cleveland gone, yeah, Buffalo, upstate New York, no angels, all those little in between places. Yeah, but but I mean, right now we're working on different things to where it's like you know it's not even gonna matter if you think you have a following over there. It's just like we just need to get the word out the way we're doing it because mm-hmm. it's starting to like this little method is starting to work for you to where it's like oh this is how we do it organically you, you know what would be dope man eventually is to um hone in the craft and tap in in a way where it, it's it no longer turn it's no longer like are there any like how many latinos are there in indianapolis like that's no longer the thing yeah uh, because i speak english yeah. you know what i'm saying so i want people to be like hey bro when you come into the uk are you ever doing canada i've seen that kind of crit- criticism though sometimes like not criticism like that but like to the point where it's like some people are like i want to go to the show but i don't really speak spanish it's like just come to the show and then they're happy afterwards because it's yeah. like one of those things like no no no, we do english dude like i re- <laughs> on, honestly um dude who might be a yeah, little bit of mix might be a little bit more 
uh, rough. You do what you get in whenever you saw the the reels. <laughs> rough around the edges. Yeah, but Chingo does English, man. Yeah. Like like uh, you know, don't let that scare you. Like, cause damn, if we were going based off of like looks and names, I mean, shit. My name is Juan Antonio Perez. I got the most Juan Mexican Antonio. Shit. I don't speak any Spanish, and if I do, it's like a little one word or something that. I explain what it means, so I mean, yeah. you gotta worry. Like, uh, don't what, let that scare uh, you. Uh, qu- uh, queso, <laughs> por favor. <laughs> yeah, quite case. How you yeah. say, K- Chingo? Hey. Tell her I want some cheese, bro. Yeah, tell her I want some cheese. The yellow one. <laughs> yeah, the ye- y'all got the uh, the como se dice? Yo. <laughs> yeah, that's oh, dude, cheese. <laughs> oh, I mean, that's a whole other comedy in Spanish. That that shit's tricky, bro. Yeah, that's hard. I did all right when I did it in L.A. because I was L.A. Yeah, and it was only ten minutes. And I was probably more confident. But once I was in Mexico and my, my primas are right there staring at me. Yeah. Making faces and shit. And I'm up there like, um, um, como se dice? Like, yeah, yeah no bueno. Well, uh, <laughs> I, I, I had to keep bringing up Israel. But Israel did yeah. a Spanish set where he did it one time. He did it in Dallas. And I remember going up. He was, like, so scared because he knows, like. Uh, El Paso Spanish. He, well, no. He knows, he knows like, real Mexican people like, that do Mexico Spanish. Oh, yeah, yeah. And so he was like, oh, it's got to be perfect yeah. words and stuff, which he does speak yeah, Spanish. Yeah, but it's Dallas, but, so, bro. Yeah, well, that's the thing. He wasn't taking into effect because he, he's a professional. So, like, yeah. for him, he's like. It's got to be, I got to, and so he was calling people flow. like, okay, does this, how does this, okay, I got to work, I got to edge that out because I got to say it proper. And then when he got there, Dallas, he was like so prepared to the point where he's like, oh, I just said this slang word, they're laughing, and fuck it. And I he just this. went off of like, yeah, no it was Spanish, but it was like, he was throwing in so oh, many lingo, and he destroyed I, honestly, the room. Honestly, bro, look, I know my manager, she over there, and she could probably hear me, um, I mean, I know we have our hands full with, with enough tours and po- projects, yeah. but hypothetically, if we wanted to flip the script in like 2028, you know, I don't know if I'm going to be touring that goddamn long, <laughs> but like, let's just say 2026 or whatever. If we said, hey man, let's get a couple guys that can, like like Jerry or Raymond, yeah. Mario, there's like certain dudes that I know yeah, can yeah. probably pull it off, where it's like, look, we're just going to do these five cities. It's going to be a quick run. We're just going to test it out. Um, like bilingual, comedia en español. Yeah. Um, but I'm, I, right now I'm thinking about Israel's jokes and I'm yeah. thinking how he would have done it. Like, no mames, güey. Vas al el pinche restaurante Olive Garden, carnal. Te traen el pinche aparato del queso. Te, you know, I'm trying to picture yeah. how he... Well, um, like, okay, it. like one, uh, I'm just going to say this one because it's like, it was, I don't know why it was so funny, but I, I don't really speak Spanish, but I understood some of it. But when he was talking about like uh, like the vagina or something, he called it a bean or something. Like you flick the bean, or but he yeah. said it in Spanish. But like, yeah, the frijol. And dude, <laughs> it fucking crushed. Yeah, and then there was like this couple in the front, and he was just he's like, "Why y'all keep looking at me with?" Wait a minute. Do y'all speak? Y'all don't speak Spanish. What'd you think this was? Y'all thought it was an English show? Oh, y'all been sitting here through three people? And he just started. But he's telling them that in English? Yeah, he's like, it's like, because he saw them because they look white. And like okay. and he's like, oh, you like that undercover type of, but I, but you he's talking from Spanish. Yeah. He's like, oh, y'all got y'all that nice spent. And then they were just like looking at each other. And he was like, oh, y'all don't even speak Spanish. Oh, y'all been here the whole show. Oh shit! And yeah, so yeah. he's probably like, talk to me after the show. I'll get y'all this shit. Well, English. they got up and left after he was done because uh, like because it was still like yeah. two more comedians he, and they he's they were probably like, you know what? He's got a point. Yeah, we should probably yeah. get out of here. We just wow. Yeah, it was funny, dude. There was some funny parts in that, but uh, but yeah, man, I just started thinking about it right now. Cause it's like those memories. It's funny. Yeah, if you have that footage and you upload it, that's the thing. Somebody said they were gonna record it in Here. 4K and we uh, never got it. Oh no! So that I didn't record that one because I was recording on his sets at that time. Do you think that person might still have that footage? I mean, I don't know, dude. right now Israel's probably looking down like, bro. Israel had asked him like three or four times, so, so he kind of wanted it. Yeah, almost Damn. like that. Almost like that footage, like in pa- El Paso, we lost for us. Ay, <laughs> ay, ay. I'm gonna see if I can still get that, bro. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna see if I. Can I don't still think get it that. came out good. I think that's why, because the audio. I don't think the audio really came out that. Good. The, I think because so. he didn't mention that. I'm the, pretty sure the video got to mention. He was just like, dude, I'm so sorry. No, I know, but I think this was like the first time he was doing that, and so because I had asked, mm-hmm. and it was his first time doing that there, so like. That's why, remember, I was trying to come up with the method for us to record our stuff, but I was like, I think we might need to get mic'd up, but, you know, he did it. I don't think it worked because we also did other shows because that was at the time where we were trying to figure out how to get the sound right. Yeah. 
And then when we did, you know, other venues, like we started figuring out, oh, we do kind of need to be mic'd up to get yeah. pretty good sound. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't think he had that, so I don't think it, I don't think it came out good. I think that's why we haven't gotten it. Okay, well, he didn't mention that. He was just like, dude, I have these projects. I'm so sorry. But uh, speaking of filming stuff, uh, we should definitely. Uh, plan on filming the sets at the houston improv i'm not sure what type of setup and cameras and stuff you want to use but uh but yeah man uh, i'm looking forward to uh well you, you tell you tell houston you got a you got a sponsor for houston got, oh yeah shout you out got some sponsors big shout guy. out to push and win shout out to push and win injury law firm 833 push win they push you win uh if you live in houston you've seen the billboards all over so big, big thank you to them. Uh, they're going to be VIP at the Saturday show. I'm Word a- on the street, Theo Hoover got some consultation from them. Oh, yeah? Yeah, well, he got some consultation. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Theo Hoover went in He yeah, because yeah. he got injured on, on, yeah, on the job. Y'all, y'all going to see a video with Theo Hoover. That, that boy, he got, a, he got a whole quote and everything. He came in with a neck brace. He was still moving his neck. Yeah. Uh, he was still giving high fives, even though his arm was in a sling. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> And it started getting a little crazy. He's like, I'm gonna, so what kind of injuries? Like, I'm gonna, it was a heavy duty, uh, you know. Yeah, y'all gotta winners. watch it. Y'all gotta watch it. It'll be up right now. So if you wanna, if you wanna see that, go to the, go to Chingo's Instagram, YouTube, TikTok. It's just just, uh, just share it, share it, share it with your friends. Uh, you know, and in this video, if you guys enjoyed the podcast, this uh, what did he said podcast is coming back now. Uh, just share the show, guys. Like, uh, you know, we're gonna. We're not going to put up any ads on any stuff yeah, and things yeah. like that. So just share the show. Yeah, watch and, it on YouTube. Uh, no ads. And shout out to the patrons on uh, Red Piltamales, Discord, yeah. uh, RPT Podcast. Uh, big shout out to them. Uh, all, all the RPT podcasts are going to be raw, uncut, specifically for the Patreon. Those won't even be public, so we won't even have to tap dance or deal with that yeah so then if you want to go there exclusively go to the patreon what was it patreon patreon.com forward slash red pill tamales yeah but if you want to watch these what did he say they can be on youtube and facebook all we ask is you just share the show and uh if you guys want to make clips from them and do it yourself and put it out Please that's do. cool too we're not gonna we're not gonna ban any of y'all so y'all can just share the show on your own thing make a channel if y'all want we don't care Please do. Thank you guys so much. This concludes the What Did He Said podcast brought to you by ChingoTheMerch.com. See you at a show. Das.